Hey you guys, welcome back. My name is Valerie and this is Bright Violet Arts. In this video, I am setting up a brand new bullet journal for the new year from scratch. And I'm gonna show you all of my illustration techniques and all of the spreads that I'm gonna use to manage the details of my life in the upcoming months. So if you're here to plan along with me today, it's time to grab your stationery, all the fancy pens, all the washi tape, Let's get into it. All right, so I've got a stack of notebooks here that I was considering for my 2022 journal, but I think I've decided on this beautiful white vegan leather number from Archer and Olive. It was an item that came in the sub box last year, I think the December sub box, and it's a crescent moon design with a fairy. It's got 160 pages with holographic edges. It is so beautiful, I'm in love with it. Here I've got my Tombow color selection for this theme. It's a pastel theme, but I am gonna use some bright gel pens from the Sakura Moonlight Jelly Rolls line. I've also got metallic gel pens, metallic paint pens, and some brown fine liners, as well as a couple of metallic watercolors. The most important supply though is gonna be colored pencil for creating the blended look that I love. I'm using the Color Soft line by Derwent. So one more thing to do before I start is I need to select my angel cards for the year. This is similar to like a word of the year that I've seen other people do. Um, essentially these are my power words for the year and I'm going to let the universe select them for me by drawing them randomly from my angel card set. So this year I got strength, authenticity, and presence. I'll come back to the angel cards in a minute when I get to the spread where I need them. But for now, I'm getting started on my nameplate design. I'm going with some dreamy colors like pinks and purples and a, a blueberry shade from Tombow. So I'm going to lay down the brush markers first in kind of a random pattern. I've got kind of a stylized version of my name that I like to use in all of my notebooks. I always keep the hand lettering the same, even though I change up the the rest of the design to match the theme of each notebook. And speaking of the theme, uh, the one I'm using for this notebook is Moon Magic. Moon Magic is a belief that's common to many different cultures that involve like rituals or spell casting, um, that if you are to line up your uh, magic with the cycles of the moon, that you know you get better results, more magic. So what that means for my artwork is that I'm going to doodle lots of accessories that any modern day spellcaster might need. Things like a spell book, a crystal ball that I've got on the cover page, you know, magical potions, um, charms, feathers, magic mushrooms, stuff like that. And then of course, lots of pictures of the moon. Okay, so the first real spread of the notebook is the index slash year at a glance page. So I'm drawing my little candle here and the first layer of color is from my Tombow markers. Then I'm gonna come in with colored pencil to add some shading. I'm gonna work on a, a little glow around the candle with three or four colors of yellow and peach. And the further away I get from the flame, the lighter and lighter my color strokes are going to be. And then when I'm satisfied with the color I've laid down, I'm going to come back in with my white pencil that I've got here, and that will blend out those colors into the paper and into each other. It creates a really nice effect. The white pencil is also perfect for adding the look of glass here and some highlights to the candle. For more opaque highlights, the next layer is my white gel pen, and the uh, jelly rolls are going to be for the flame. And the last thing I'm going to do is outline it with a 0.7 millimeter size black Posca pen. And of course, you know, it's not a regular candle, right? It's a magical candle. And for me, I'm going to indicate that things are magical by just drawing sparkles around them. 
have a clear glitter pin. It's part of the Jelly Rolls line from Sakura, and I'm using that to fill in these sparkles here. It is just clear glitter, and you can apply it over any other doodle to add some, some shine. I used it in the crystal ball, and I'll be using it throughout this notebook. I'm highlighting off the blanks here to write in the pages of my table of contents. On the opposite side of the spread, I'm going to stamp in miniature calendars for each month of 2022. This is a page that I'm going to be flipping back to really often. Um, it's one of my most used pages. I always have to refer to this page whenever I'm setting up my planning pages for each new month of the year. In years past, I used to write out all these little tiny calendars with a pen, but I've definitely gotten a lot of benefit from this set of calendar stamps I got from Amazon. I'll link as many of these products in my description box as I can. If you've been around my channel before, you may know that hand lettering is kind of my jam, but for this notebook, something about the aesthetic just really attracted me to the typewriter stamps that I'm using. So for most of the titles, uh, I'm stamping it all out. It's time consuming, but I just love the look of it. And we're on to the next spread. So this one is going to be for intentions of 2022 and reflections back on 2021. I'll have two columns of text on either side of this art journal piece. The order of materials that I used on this is going to be the same as it was for the candle. Usually when I'm coloring in a design, I start with Tombow markers on the bottom, the second layer is colored pencil, I follow that with gel pen, and then finally paint pen on the top. Then the last little touch is the metallic watercolor. So I'm going to add in some journaling prompts for the intentions and reflections. Looking back on 2021, I want to remember my successes or my wins. I want to take note of any major challenges. And then I've got a spot for habits to keep and habits to ditch. My first spot on the intention side is for the angel cards. You remember those, right? I think of the angel cards as being like personality traits that we all already have inside us. But when I draw an angel card each year, it's a reminder that I can use that personality trait specifically when I'm facing you know, challenges in the upcoming year. It's like, those are my superpowers or something. So on to the next spread, this is my monthly reflections setup, and it is just a space to check in with myself after each month and assess my progress toward any annual goals that I've set. It's a place to document successes and challenges, any events that are relevant to my mood, well-being, or motivation. Um, like I said, just a self-assessment, I can pretty much write anything I want here and we'll see how it goes. It's a new spread for me. I did really enjoy the process of doodling all these little magical items. I especially like the little spell book. He's so cute. I really think that's the major appeal of bullet journaling for me as a system. Um, I'm tracking important information, but what appeals to me is the overwhelming cuteness of this notebook. When it comes to the, the data for me, I guess I'm just thinking of like a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. It's like all these cute doodles help me deal with the fact that like I'm actually just tracking some of the monotonous details of everyday adult life in here. Like when's my car registration due? 
you know, did I pay my quarterly taxes, etc. Okay, at this point I decided that I wanted to make tabs for all of the lists and data logs that I'm going to make in these next pages. I cut seven tabs, uh, three of them are large and then four on the bottom are kind of small. And initially I had an idea that I was going to put certain kinds of lists on one set of tabs and another kind of list in the other tabs, but it didn't work out that way. I, I ended up changing the order of my spreads. So now the different colors and sizes of tabs are just, you know, for variety, I guess. I'm using my Tombow permanent glue runner to attach the tabs to the paper. So the first tabbed page that I've got is my future log and I'm going to draw in six rectangles, one for each month that I expect to be planning for within this notebook. Okay, so you guys, let's talk about this illustration. I just, I need to discuss it with you. It's really important. If you look at the hand on the left side of the page, it's missing a finger. I just, I don't know how I lost count. I, I don't know how to explain it. And then I was doing my fine liner here on the right and I found the extra finger. Look, that hand has six. What was I doing? I'm just glad that I figured it out before I put all of the fine liner in. <laughs> so I was able to save the picture. This is a full out art journal illustration that snuck its way into my planner. Um, I didn't mean for the picture to take the whole page, but I guess I was just feeling kind of abstract that day. And once I started blending the markers with my colored pencils, um, pretty soon the background just sort of stretched down the whole page and I had to just go with it. I do hope that you enjoy watching the illustration process at least. And of course, this is bullet journaling, so quotes are essential, right? I love a quote page. Drawing in these clouds was a little bit scary because I wanted to add colors that were being reflected at the bottom of the clouds, um, but I put a lot of color on there and it kind of looked like it was reflecting some sort of storm underneath the, the cloud. And I was really glad I had used that semicircle stencil for the lettering because it was very easy to convert that into a rainbow, you know, that I hadn't planned for, but it just worked out great because that provided the colors to be reflected into the cloud so it didn't have to look like a storm. To make these clouds look three-dimensional and fluffy, I'm using a paint pen because the paint just sort of sits right on top of the colored pencil and adds some extra dimension. Adding the stars to the night sky with the Posca pen is so satisfying as a final touch. And I really do like to look at this page even now, you know, as um, a quote page. I'm really glad that I accidentally filled up the rest of my future log with it. But now it's back to reality with the next spread. This one is for tracking my weight. I'm going to put uh, every Monday's date in this box for 26 weeks, which is the same as the six months that this notebook covers. So for every week until the end of June, I'll have my weight here. And then there's a spot there just to put the total either lost or gained at the end of that time period. On the other side of the page, I'm setting up two trackers. Each of them are gonna cover the six month period for the notebook. So 
So I'm stamping out a quote about glamour here because like I'm trying to get my mojo back this year. Uh, I don't necessarily have a goal to wear makeup every day or anything like that. It's just that like, you know, before the pandemic, that was something I did, you know, almost every day. And um, now I, I work at home and I just don't have the same interest level in doing that. So although the goal is not to wear it every day, it's just, I don't know, I'm just collecting the information to see how it's going. And that's the great thing about bullet journaling is that you can use these charts to collect whatever information you want for whatever your purposes are. So the face I'm drawing here is one of those single line art pieces where the idea is to draw the whole shape without lifting up your pen so it's all one line. Oh my gosh, it was so hard. It was the most difficult time I had with any doodle in the entire notebook. And I totally had to cheat. I can't do that. I had to lift up my pen like a hundred times. So on my next spread, I'm doing a cleaning tracker, and I have an illustration of an eye at the bottom of the page. And I actually had to look that up to find out like what's up with all these single eye drawings that I see in like mystical art, bohemian art, you know, I've seen them my whole life and I didn't know what they meant. So I looked it up and it says that it's um, just referred to as the third eye, and it is symbolic of extrasensory perception or some other power that would go above and beyond natural human ability. So I thought that was pretty cool. There's also a box here for daily chores. The box below it is for weekly chores. Now this page has my favorite illustration of the whole notebook in it. This is a, a figure that I did in gel pen and she's sitting on a moon that is like marker and colored pencil. And then everything got a paint pen outline. The box that I'm creating at the bottom is for personal development tasks, and it's just a glorified checklist. So the tasks that I would put in this box are going to be things that I feel will further my own development just as an individual. Um, things that expand my mind or my perception, um, improve my character or willpower, things like that. Flipping over to the next spread, this is my social media content planner. And this whole page is gonna provide just a place to put theme ideas for my bullet journal, as well as ideas for videos that I might make for YouTube or reels that I might make for Instagram. The other side of the spread has a account growth tracker just to record my number of followers and subscribers. Here I'm rounding off the corners of my tabbed pages. I forgot to do that earlier. And then we're on to the next spread, which is my media tracker. So I've got YouTube, TV film, music books, and podcasts. And it's just a place to list uh, things I want to catch up on whenever I have some downtime. Here's a look at the finished media spread. And moving on to my research page. I'm gonna start it off with an illustration of some fancy magical potion bottles and some feathers and greenery. So I mentioned that this is my research page. Uh, the things that I'm going to research, you know, any topics that I need to Google, I'll put on the right side here. And for words, uh, I actually study Spanish. And so I put English words here if I don't know the definition. I also list all the unfamiliar Spanish words that I come across. And here's how it looked once I had the watercolor layer on top. I really liked that one. Alright, this is a spread for shopping, or more specifically, I have a wish list for myself on here. I also have uh, a list of gift ideas for the people that I buy for in my life. My illustration is a magical mushroom patch. And you remember what I said about sparkles, right? 
<laughs> you can tell it's magical from the sparkles. Now, don't worry about Lily and Violet. If you see their names on the little tiny box there, those are my dogs and their wish list is very short. Okay, this is the last spread in this notebook so far, and it is my bulletin board spread. This is just like my own little bulletin board where I can leave notes to myself, like uplifting messages and quotes. I can doodle pictures here or, you know, take notes, anything I want. This is a little paragraph I got from somewhere on the internet, and I put it into Procreate to it out in colors that match my theme. It's just about like finding peace in your life. So let's do a final flip through of the New Year's spreads that I made today. I'm so glad that you stopped by to check out the video. I love sharing my journal with you guys on social media. It's seriously such a joy for me. If you have anything you want to share with me, any thoughts on this video or if you find any inspiration in it, let me know about it. Um, if you have feedback of any kind, you know, let me know and I would love to, you know, find more out about the people who watch my videos and the kind of content you'd like to see more of from me. I wish you the best of luck in setting up your own bullet journal. I hope that it turns out exactly the way you want and gives you all of the planning tools that you need for a successful and happy 2022. I will post uh, pictures of each of these spreads on my Instagram. You can find me over there. I'm at Bright Violet Arts. So this journal is ready for the start of the new year, but time is moving fast and it's only a couple of weeks until I'll be back with another video for my January plan with me. I have such a cute theme in mind for next month and I can't wait to share it with you. So until the next video, thanks again for watching and happy journaling.